Kyle, you were giving us a little bit of play by play. Some of the others in the chat were doing so yesterday also while we were wrapping up our show. And Joel looked really good in the first half, did not play in the second half. They said it was because of his ankle, ankle. but the so game he had was a mildly sprained ankle. The game was Steve out of Kirsten. reach. He didn't have to play anyway. Bam out of bio got the start in the second half. He looked good yesterday. Yes. He looked real good yesterday. Yeah. I, I think, and we got a lot into his conditioning and whatnot yesterday. To me, the more important thing than he hit a bunch of shots, which that was three for three from three. Everyone was loving, oh, Joel's hitting threes, and that's what people focus on. What jumped out to me, they let him or asked him to switch more on defense, and Joel got in a stance and was chasing guys around and without making plays at the rim, which he still made those. And I thought he was a more active, engaged rebounder than he had been in previous games. I thought seeing him get down, drop his hips, slide his feet, do all that. That, to me, was the biggest deal of that game, just seeing him move laterally in ways that I didn't think he had before. Did guys score on him occasionally in space? Sure, sure but yeah. they were taking <clears> – <throat> excuse me. They're taking some, like, 16- to 18-foot floaters. It's like, if a guy's going to hit that shot, defenses are designed to concede that shot now. And so – to watch Joel lock some guys down, rebound the ball, and then add some points on the other end of the floor that were the icing on the cake. That's what I wanted to see from Joel is all, all the defensive work, all the mobility we saw yesterday. That was good stuff. I would have loved to see him in the second half to see him, you know, really pour it on these guys. Going, but obviously right. yeah. uh, better safe than sorry if he had any kind of little ankle knock that he was dealing with. Yeah. No, I mean, look, it is – you know, we mentioned this the other day when we were talking about Team USA. When the big man's switching, it's almost impossible. Outside of picking on Curry, it's almost impossible for teams to score on him. So seeing Joel do that, first of all, it, it helped Team USA, but also helped alleviate some of our concerns. I said yesterday, I don't really, out as long as they win a gold medal, because like I said, I don't want to deal with the controversy of the Sixers being at the center of another Team USA team coming up short. I lived through that once, don't need a second time. Outside of that, as long as Joel Embiid starts moving better and starts looking like he's progressing toward the player that you normally see in like January, I don't really care if he makes shots. I don't really care too much how much success he has. I don't care about the narrative. I can tune that out. The fact that he was switching on the perimeter was also my number one takeaway by a long shot. And I agree with Kyle, this, the work on the glass, when Joel Embiid's tired and or not getting good lift, it shows up on the defensive glass first. Yes. And seeing that was certainly a little bit reassuring. And it, that one sequence that he had where he defended two players on the perimeter, forced another pass to a smaller guard in the paint. He had to take a fadeaway in the middle of the, of the lane and Joel at least recovered enough to defend it force him to miss that shot. That was one sequence that really stood out. Uh, was that, that the one where right after, and I'm glad Dwayne Wade pointed this out, he ran the floor and yeah. posted somebody, yep. he threw him the ball, got knocked out of bounds, and Dwayne Wade's like, you got to give the big man the ball Reward. after he defends like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is mm -hmm. the type of thing that I think gets lost so much in with the way the league has gone, right? It's very perimeter-based. You don't have a lot of guys like Joel in the league. There are a lot of guys who have never played with someone like that who would just like, Oh, yeah, he did his job. and not, No, feed the big guy when he has possessions like that. I hope that they put that on the the wall or the in a film session at a Sixers practice and say, this is what happens when Joel defends. Give that guy the damn ball. Love that, and I'm glad that Dwayne Wade was able to highlight that on the broadcast yesterday. So that's at least two wins for them to set up where Embiid has played. He played decently enough to help in the win. The other day on Saturday, and he was really good in the first half to contribute to the win on He's Tuesday. He's their best player in the first half, I think, yesterday. Between At least LeBron. one of them. Yeah. yeah, he and LeBron. And now we set up for the semifinals, another game against Serbia. And they've had their way against Serbia, yeah. but this is now in the semifinal round. Yeah. And, look, I feel confident in Team USA winning. I, I mean, they're Team USA. You should feel confident they had, in them Serbia winning. had to turn the game around, what was it, 27 point? Yeah. Uh, it, this, uh, uh, disadvantage that they were on? Yeah. But, like, if you're worried about the narrative and people outside of the city, like if Joel Embiid struggles even a tiny bit and Team USA wins by 20 points, the internet's going to lose their mind because it's Embiid and Jokic and all that stuff. And like I said, I don't really care. I can shut down Twitter, but get ready for it. Like, I hope he has a good game, or a good game just for my mentions. We all city like the mayor. 